Hi, Jessica here with the Janung team and Real Broker, and Scott is joining me from the team, which I am very happy about in this video. I get a little bit tired of talking to myself sometimes, so thanks yeah, for joining me Of course, me I'm really today. excited to be here, so. <laughs> we are gonna be doing a walking tour of downtown Murrieta, which is actually the first topic that we're gonna talk about. Um, what exactly is the downtown area of Murrieta called? There is a lot of controversy about that. And as I'm looking around, I see a lot of different names. So... Right. So we're standing here by the Old Town <laughs> Meeting Room, but we've also seen signs calling it the historic downtown Murrieta. So yeah. there are a couple different names that people call it, and it's been a bit of a controversy with the locals, apparently. Yeah, I'm going to go with um, historic downtown. I think that's the official name, but I always call it Old Town. <laughs> and I've been corrected on that, saying, no, it's downtown Murrieta. But um, as you can see, we're right by the Old Town meeting room. So uh, your guess is as good as mine. But really quaint downtown area here in Murrieta. So not too many folks are aware that Murrieta even has a downtown area. A lot of people, they're very familiar with Temecula's right. downtown where Scott lives because it's huge. <laughs> yes, it's it, a lot of people come there on the weekends uh, in downtown Temecula to tour the wineries and then go to Old Town. There are a lot of restaurants down there. It's, it, it is touristy. I call it a little Disneyland. There's a lot of branding, Temecula branding, things like that that you can purchase at the stores there. Whereas here, it feels a lot more quiet local small businesses in both areas but mm -hmm. just more quaint like you said it's it's a nice little pocket of Murrieta that I feel like a lot of people actually outside of Murrieta don't know about. It's true Temecula is kind of more on the map they're very similar sized cities they're both about 115,000 people um, and everyone's aware of Temecula's downtown but that's why we're uh, showing you Murrieta's because a lot of people don't know about it. So we'll start our tour here at one of my favorite restaurants in the area because I absolutely love the atmosphere and that's the downtown public house. Yeah, I agree. It's delicious. I've eaten there as well, and it's one of my favorite places to go here in, in downtown Marietta. Yeah, the best part about it is the outside seating area that has this huge tree over uh, shading it, and it has the fire pits outside as well. So a uh, really fun happening place to go for a drink and some food. And then right across the street, we have Anthony's. That's an Italian food restaurant. Uh, delicious, like white tablecloths, maybe for a special occasion, but very, very authentic and delicious Italian food. And then right next door, um, you're probably familiar with the Crafted Scone. <laughs> yes, yep. So when I know when the Janung team does tours with people from out of the area and we start doing kind of an area tour with them, we meet them there That's to kick off the tour. Place. So <laughs> it's a great little yeah. place. Again, love the vibe. Uh, it's got coffee, scones, obviously, and sandwiches. Lots of food there. Love it. Yeah, it's a great meeting area. There's always parking down here because it's not as crazy as the Temecula downtown. So it's a great place for us to kind of sit down, get to know clients. And then um, the way we normally work our tours is they follow us uh, in their car and we go on a driving tour of the area if they're not familiar with the neighborhoods. So we are there quite often. <laughs> um, okay, let's continue on down the street. We moseyed on down the street a little bit and we're actually right across the street from Chris's favorite restaurant. Has he told you? Yeah, the mill. <laughs> the mill, yeah. yeah. He just got, actually he's off eating takeout uh, from the mill right now. Sorry, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but actually, that reminds me, there's car shows down here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Here we had a rod run. That's a very popular event that's down here. So you'll get a lot of the hot rod noise uh, during those events. Um, so the mill, right across the street, pizzas, pastas, great outdoor seating area. Uh, right next to it is Calhoun's, which is a delicious barbecue restaurant. Highly recommend it. Um, they have a ton of support from the community. They, they actually were just hosting... Uh, they were uh, cooking brisket at uh, our pony baseball games. So uh, very popular for catering delicious barbecue. And lastly, over here in the corner of the shopping center, you have a coin and gun shop. It's actually one of two gun shops on the street. We have several gun shops in the area. So we're actually going to spin around here and we're going to show you another restaurant we like. Yeah, I want to mention Wine Ranch. It's a staple here in downtown. They have wine tasting, outdoor seating, fire pits, and again, the word of the day, it's a vibe. I love the feeling down here from restaurants like this, the mill, public house, no matter where you go down here, you're gonna feel at ease and just relax. The vibe is immaculate. Definitely, Marietta does have a really small town community feel. You will run into people that you know down here and a lot of the restaurants are conducive to that. All right, so now we're just south of B Street. So the south side of downtown historic Marietta and the name coincides really well with the buildings you're gonna find here. These are the oldest buildings here in Marietta. Couple small businesses here and there, but definitely feels a lot different than say Old Town Semecula. You aren't gonna find a yes. lot of businesses here. It's really quiet, uh, very, very quaint. I agree. This is definitely the more historic side of downtown Marietta. 
And so you've got some pros and some cons with that. And we always give you the pros and the cons. We hear that you guys like to hear both sides of it. So um, development is harder down here for people to bring in businesses. They want to change up the buildings. I've heard that there can be quite a lot of resistance to that. Uh, one recent thing is actually uh, right across the street, actually. <laughs> Um, it's called Joni's Cantina, and I'd read about it in the newspaper. It was supposed to be a Belchin Beaver brewery. Yes. I was so excited. It was going to be like a couple levels. It was going to have a rooftop bar. Uh, we could definitely use some more restaurants down here. Uh, I thought that they had purchased the land. Maybe somebody could give me the full story down below in the comments, because last I heard, it got quashed. <laughs> Which yeah. uh, I was surprised about that. So you have to take the good with the bad. Yeah, I would definitely say that this south side of downtown Marietta is more almost like contracting businesses. Like, you know, there's a, a carpet sales place, but there is a couple of shops that I want to make sure that you don't miss. Um, for starters, there is the donut shop. Delicious, delicious donuts. Yes. <laughs> uh, kids love it. And um, there's an interior decorating store named Jade and there's May's Market and then the same family of women that opened May's Market right across the street from it opened a clothing store called Pure Bliss that I stumbled into the other day. It was the granddaughter that was helping open uh, the clothing store and they had some cute, cute stuff and it was so reasonable. I want to make sure I'm going to try to get you some pictures of that shop. Um, love to support local shops. Yes. And, and on that note, I want to talk about the Marietta Market Nights. This is the first and third Thursday of any given month throughout the whole year. And it's a great opportunity to support local businesses, vendors, small businesses, and it's very family friendly. So yes. make sure you come out for that. It's right here on the street. They close it off and open to everybody. That's right. It's at night. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's the night market. We'll show you a, a picture of the sign, but a lot going on down there. Uh, food, live music, and it has grown throughout the years. Uh, it's it's huge now. It's, it's quite the event. So fun thing to do on Thursday nights for sure. Absolutely. So we are here right outside the Chapel Coffee House, and there is the historic chapel right over here as well. This is a really big property, a really great place to bring kids. Um, I, I know our kids, they, they went with the neighbors the other day, they were playing chess, so they kind of have some activities for them to do too. It's not open all the time, um, so check the website for the hours. Um, but there's a, a really sweet and sad story kind of surrounding this business. It was uh, founded by parents of a girl um, who was killed in a drunk driving accident, a, a young, a teenager. And so this, it, it's part of a nonprofit and they have plans to grow it. So they're gonna be having more events. They would like to remodel uh, this whole area, have it open more. Um, they even envision it to be like a resource for the community for like homeless or hungry, um, people that need uh, help with childcare, just be a, a resource for the community. So it's a really sweet business. Yeah. And while we're down here, I want to talk about the plaza across the street. Okay. This is just like the plaza that's mm -hmm. up north. You have a, a gun store here, an ammo store here, and there's a sports bar and grill here called Sidelines. So it's another place where you can stop in, check out the small businesses and, and just check it out. And I just want to talk about as well down B Street, you have a couple parks just outside of Old Town Marietta. So one of those is the town square plaza, the park where they do a summer series, a concert series, which everyone is welcome to uh, throughout the entire summer. So yes, that's correct. Tons of events going on there. Like, yes, you just mentioned the concert series. They have like the movie nights in the park that are always very family friendly. They just did trunk or treat. They have yeah. Santa with like all the fire trucks and stuff. A lot of fun stuff always going on there. Always a lot of times free and for the community. And then uh, right next to the park, you've got the library. Yes. Uh, we love that library. It's not just books. They have um, robotics and games for the kids and even video games and it's stuff. Very modern. Right library. Yeah. Very modern library. Yes. Um, and then uh, Chris's favorite, I don't know where Chris went, but um, the walking distance also down B Street, you've got a couple pickleball courts. So they are, we are short in short supply of pickleball courts around here, but two of, of the only ones that are really around here are right down right. B Street as well. Uh, also, if you just head down Washington, we have a driving range, uh, golf driving range, been there for a really long time. Are you familiar with Ricky Fowler? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's like one of Marietta's claim to fame. He's a, he's a professional golfer. He's yes. actually been doing very good this year all of a sudden. 
So let's talk about the housing in the area. What are the houses? What are the neighborhoods like? We're going to tell you a little bit about the options. So uh, the closest housing around the downtown Marietta area, it's very, I describe it as like hodgepodge. It's like a little this, a little that. It's some manufactured homes, some mobile homes, some cute little homes. Some people maintain, some people don't. There's no HOA. So a little this and that within walking distance, but some kind of cool investment property opportunities as well. They give you, there's like some interesting zoning around here. So if you're into building, there, there might be some opportunities there. Um, but just down the road, there's a lot of condo options. As yeah, well. especially new construction. So if you like newer homes or, or new construction in general, so Solero by Lennar, it's, mm -hmm. it's all sold out. Those are townhome condos, uh, yeah. but it's within walking distance, just to the north of town. Yeah. And then just beyond that, uh, up Washington, you have another development that's still selling called Poppy Lane by Legacy Homes. Mm -hmm. They have two floor plans available there starting in the 400s. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty great considering that almost everything's selling for at least 500 uh, yeah. around here right now. They are great prices. They look super cute as well. I hear they're at the very end though. <laughs> yes, they are at the very end. They have a couple left. Um, I did speak to that sales rep just the other day and they're very motivated to get people in there and, and get the last of their, their condos sold. As is normally the case when the communities are finishing out, they want yeah. to get those people on down the road. So, exactly. Uh, other than that, I mean, in Murrieta, there are really there is no new construction, single family homes going on right now. Um, but down the street in Wildemar, which is actually quite close to here, down the street, there is another project. Coming. Yes, by Dr. Horton, it's going to be coming in in the coming months into next year, and it has single family homes ranging from just under 1,900 square feet up to over 3,000 square feet. No HOA in there either. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's really close proximity to here. And single family homes in Marietta or in the proximity of Marietta, which is a rare find, so. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm actually super excited for that community to come in because yes. it's right by where I live and I love a short commute. It's also gonna have a beautiful lower mountain view. So I think it's gonna be a prime location just over the Marietta border in Wildemar. So excited for that one. Um, other resale neighborhoods, tons of them around here. Uh, Copper Canyon, Copper Creek, Marietta Ranchos, a very popular single story community. Right. Bear Creek, if you're going high end, the custom homes. And then along the base of the mountain here, tons of custom homes. To yes. you know, million, two million, your nice uh, estate type properties are surrounding this whole area as well. So, a little this, a little that. So, you can get into a really affordable condo or you could buy the multi million dollar amazing home. Lots of opportunities yes. over here. Um, schools are highly rated as well. Myriad is very well known for that. Uh, we also didn't talk about, I'm going to go ahead and mention it real quick, is um, the police department. It's right down that same B Street by the park, by City Hall, by yes. the library. Um, Murrieta has its own police department. Um, excellent police department, uh, by the very, uh, very good reputation, very involved in the community. Yes. I love their social media. You can see what they're doing. If they need to find somebody, the citizens are on it. A lot of local involvement and support for our local yeah, police community department. Community watch and things like that. It's a very, Murrieta in general is a very active community mm -hmm. on, on the level with other people in the community. So yes. yeah. it's, it's great. Yes, absolutely. So if you are considering a move to Murrieta, um, I do have a free relocation guide down below in the description. If you have any questions, we would love to hear from you. And Scott, thank you so much for joining me. Yes, you're so welcome. I love not having to talk to myself. <laughs> well, and if you're already <laughs> here, if you're in the Valley, Temecula, Murrieta, Menifee, or Wildemar, come check out downtown historic Murrieta. This place is worth the visit. It is, it will be worth it. Thanks so much for joining us, yeah. bye.